All right, um, so I write horror, occult, supernatural, scary things. Um, but I'm going to teach all of you guys today how to become artists. So if you want to turn around, take a look, we're going to do a little bit of slides, um, and then we're going to dive into the tool. My name is Matthew Buza. Um, if you're interested in this talk, and then also how to use it, the art you make, um, I'm giving another talk, right, Linda, two weeks from now, on Canva and how to use Canva to make book covers, marketing materials, and wonderful things like that. So I give a lot of talks here. I've given most of my talks multiple times. This is the first time I'm giving this talk, so it might be a little rusty and a little scary. So the next, the next talk is going to be at the Maryville Library. Maryville's Library, yeah. So. You can't quite get to the Thanks for letting me know because I have an outstanding <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, um, we're going to talk about AI art for authors. Um, so what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is really a lot, there's a huge answer there. So we're not going to go into a lot about what that is. But basically, it is a program that has been trained to do certain things. Um, this is a very specific AI. So this would be known as application-specific artificial intelligence, um, or not a general artificial intelligence. Um, so basically, this has been trained on to make art, okay? So it's only art. It can't make your coffee or toast or anything like that. It can make an image of toast, um, but that's about all it can do. Um, but why it's popular and why it's been really, really kind of a, a to rip through the kind of the author community on Firestorm is because now we don't have to spend $300 for an artist for make our covers. That's been the biggest thing, but I think there's a lot more application out there, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that is. So... First thing I want to just mention, normally with my presentations, I do a lot of art. I put a lot of memes and stuff, try to make it humor um, filled. All the pictures in this are, most of them have been made by me for this talk. And I did it in minutes. That's the key to remember, minutes. And I'll point out the images that I made. All right. So there's your first image. First thing you got to know is that you are bad at art and you know it. <laughs> Even if you're like, I have done art in my past and everything, you are bad compared to good artists. And we all know that some of us want to DIY it ourselves. Some of us want to spend three years learning how to draw so we can actually make pictures for our covers and pictures for our books when we really should just be writing our book. Now we have tools to allow us to do that art for us. Be, be aware of that. You're bad at art. Most of us are bad at art. There's a few of us in here that are good at art. They're probably okay at art. Some people like myself are okay. But even fewer of us are good enough for print. And I think that's the important thing. OK? All right, being good at art is as hard as writing a book. <laughs> really, really important. It takes a lot of practice, like that guy I made in about two, two seconds. Um, lots of hours, lots of failure, and there's a lot of barrier to entry. And a lot of times that barrier to entry is time and money. And that's two things we do not have as authors. OK, so what do we do? We tend to throw a lot of money from the sky, falling from the sky. Uh, we pay, we pay a lot of money, we hope to gain, help those people when we, we, we ask them what to make because it's in our head and we see it and we want them to make it. We hope they get our vision. We hope they get our style. We end up picking a lot of different artists who have nice portfolios that kind of match what we're looking for. But even then, it's a crapshoot, okay? I have an example here on Reddit, hungry artists. They tend to spend about $60 for a bust. So that would be chest up. That's no color. If you want a full body, it's $180 for a full body with color. That's a character. So if you think about that, I want to do a character, or I want a character on the front of my book, you're going to spend $180 for a custom piece of art. And obviously, book covers can be wide-ranging, but if you want a nice book cover that's pretty much fits your genre, you're going to be spending north of $300. That's for the design, the topography, and the layout. Okay? Those are the type of things we have to overcome, and then hopefully the AI art will be able to do that. Challenge to the author world. Uh, Kindle started what 2012, right? So one of the one of the 2010. So one of the cool things when you when you open up a creativity and you open up the opportunities, you get a lot of innovation. And unfortunately, for the last 10 years, we as self-published authors have been doing what every other author has done for the last 400, 5,000 years, which is just do what's come before. We have not innovated. We have not pushed the envelope. We have not tried to do anything different or think beyond the keyboard. Another 
five second image made there. So what are we talking about today? Specifically, we're gonna be talking about two tools, okay? Art Breeder, which what we'll start with, and then we'll finish with Mid Journey, which is, I think, it's like Art Breeder is like watching the JV football team and Mid Journey would be like watching the Huskies, right? So it's, it's a, I think it's a very wide gap between the two, but I think Art Breeder is a good place to start for a lot of people in this room, okay? There's two other tools out there and there's actually even more now. They're spawning like rabbits right now, but um, Stable Diffusion is, the, is one of the big ones. That is a open source, download to your computer, do it on your own computer type of thing. Don't have to pay for it. It's free, but it's also very, it's a lot slower and it costs a little bit more on computing power. So you have to have a right graphics card. You have to have a, a really powerful computer to be able to, to run it pro properly. The one here, which I think will always be chasing mid-journey because they had a closed beta for a long time, mid-journey opened up to everybody ahead of them, is Dolly and Dolly 2. Dolly 2 was a closed beta, I think, for a long time. And then they opened it up, but they did it a little bit late, so they're kind of late to the game. And so they're gonna always be chasing mid-journey for the number of users, features, and capabilities. Mid-journey and Dolly 2, I think, are very comparable, comparable on price comparable on technology, but they have two different focuses. Mid-Journey focuses on style and aesthetics, and Dolly 2 did, until maybe a few weeks ago, <laughs> uh, do a really good job on the realism, like authentically generating human beings. But I think Mid-Journey with their new beta and the, the new new beta that's come out, um, blows it out of the water. But there are a couple of really cool features in Dolly 2, which we're not gonna talk about today which allow you to expand images based on the style of an original image. So if you imagine you had an image here, and you said, I have a blank white canvas, I want you to extend that image out using additional prompts. So for example, if you have a woman sitting in a, kind of an oil painting, sitting in a room, I wanna add things next to her that would be fitting within that room. Does that make sense? Okay, so Dolly 2 now has that capability. People are now going between the two tools to use that feature because it's a very good feature, but by the time everybody gets really good at mid-journey, I think mid-journey will have that feature pretty soon. So just be aware of that mid-journey is moving very fast. They're making a lot of money, which is a good thing. Okay, any questions so far? We're gonna focus on the top two tools. All right, so why does art matter for storytellers? So what do the Lascaux paintings in France have to do with Stephen King? Okay, so the first one on the left, Caves discovered, I think maybe 100 years ago, maybe within the last 100 years, 17,000 year old paintings in, in, I think, Southern France, Central France. And they found that these paintings were not all done at the same time, okay? So they were done over the course of a couple hundred years, which means people were returning back to the caves to tell stories, to put art, to tell these stories, and people were inspired by that, okay? So that's important. So we've, for a long time, we have had art, and storytelling kind of going together, okay? Why does Stephen King matter? <clears throat> this book was written in 1982. I was born in 1982. <laughs> this is one of my first King books I ever read when I was 10. It inspired me to be a writer. So you can kind of see these parallels. And that image right there is one of my favorite, and it's actually a piece of artwork that was at the end of the book. This is The Gunslinger, the first book in his Dark Tower series. So for me, these, these two images tell the importance that I think we should all have with respect to art, with, even if we write novels, whether it's a little kid's book or a dark occult fantasy horror. I'm getting free steps by talking. <laughs> and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I just felt I buzzed at 7,000. So <laughs> anyway, um, I uh, can't cheat, guys. You can't cheat. But we will cheat in art today, so don't worry about that one. Okay, another one. Story as old as time. Bible, Genesis, has been inspiring art for thousands and thousands of years. Specifically, Milton, uh, Paradise Lost, one of the great stories of, of English literature. Artists have taken that piece and done their own art, from Blake to Martin to Doré to Dali. So art and writing are synonymous, I think they go together. I just wanna to drive that home because I think this is a big watershed moment for publishing 
and for self-publishing because I think a lot of self-publishing artists are going to take their stories and do something that the big publishers are going to take a long time to catch up to. Okay, because we have these wonderful tools. I just want to drive this home, how important this is. So, where can we use art? Here's a couple of ideas. You may come up with others, and you would be 100% right in using them. So anything from character images to landscapes, you know, chapter art, the little icon, you know, little art piece at the front of your chapter, whatever it might be, supplemental materials, marketing materials, web images, social media stuff, cards for your YouTube channel, whatever it might be, alien anatomy art within your book, whatever that might be, I think is super important. Why I think this is important is that my daughter is currently being read uh, Sorcerer's Stone, but this is obviously Harry Potter. This is Chamber of Secrets, second book. This is a special edition. Um, Jim Kay has been doing artwork for the book page by page. So every single page has a piece of artwork in here. Every page has artwork. And he is hand drawing, hand, you know, different mediums, different styles, and it goes all the way through. And I can't tell you how important this is for my daughter to be able to read Harry Potter, which stories she's already read multiple times, or had it read to her. She's listened to it dozens and dozens of times, but they're doing a reread using Chamber. I think they're up through Goblet now. So he's every two years or so, he's putting out a new one. So there's the importance of art, especially with the younger books, children's books, young adult novels, juvenile novels, I think are very important, especially for the kids. All right, any questions so far? How old is she now? She is going to be seven in a month. Yeah. So let's talk about Art Breeder. This one's been around for a while. This one first got the bug in my ear on being able to use art to short circuit the process of learning how to be a really good artist and be able to use art. But it's been around and they've been adding features. It's been slow but it, you can see how powerful it can be, right? So general images, young woman's face, scarier type of you know, imaginary images and landscapes. They do buildings, they do science-y kind of art. If you have a band and you want to cover, you can make it, you can make it here as well. Um, they also have furry and anime portraits and I won't get into what furries are. You can Google that on your own term. Um, make sure you're in incognito mode when you do it. Um, <laughs> so Art Breeder, I think is the first one to start in 2018. You can get a free account. Um, they give you a couple of credits so you can use it right, right, out, of the, right out of the bat. Um, you can use it to create images and play. So I, I think it's a great place for you to start. And if you are interested in starting with art, you should start with Art Breeder to start. So what does it cost? If you actually want to get into it and start using it, $9 a month, you get about 200 down, downloads. For most people, that is way more than you need. <laughs> um, so $10 a month, you can e easily start making art. Go ahead. That's what I said, yeah, they get you started. They give you a couple free credits and you can get going. But the minute you start passing that number, they also limit the, how many uploads you have because well, I'll show you guys how, how, it, how it works, but uploading images and then using those as references, um, I think they use this as part of your credits, if I'm right, okay? So obviously you can, you can pay as much as you want. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah, it's per month. I'm, I'm sorry, that was a typo. Per month. What? That's per month. Per month. Yeah, so I, you can get $9 at, at uh, 200 images. Yeah, no, no, because uh, what's really important, maybe I'll step aside. What is occurring when you, when you generate this art? If you use something like Stable Diffusion, which is something that's downloaded to your computer that runs on your computer, um, that's, that's free actually to download and free to run except you're using your computer to do that. For these, for Art Breeder and Mid Journey, you are paying to use somebody else's computer. In essence, a giant server, a big massive computer. Think of it, something like that. And then they return the images back to you because it takes a lot of computation to, to crunch out these images fast and your computer could not do that. Okay. Any other questions? Oh yeah, most of these things are basically month to month, and then they give you a discount for a yearly price. Absolutely, that's a great question. We'll talk about that. Okay, so Art Breeder, so you hear it in the word, and we'll actually do this, this exact breeding right here uh, in a minute or so. I'll show you, I'm, 
the goal today is to not talk to this, but to talk to this. And so you guys can watch it actually happen. Okay, so you take an image of Zendaya. So if anyone knows who she is, famous actress, um, dating Tom Holland, I think, Spider-Man. Um, so she was in Dune, and then you breed it with another woman, okay? And you can see how they bred together, and you create this new output, okay? This is the idea of breeding. That's their, that's their kind of the philosophy of thinking when it comes to making art with Art Breeder, okay? And why is Art Breeder important? Um, you can change these attributes of the character, age, hair length, color of the eyes, really fast. And they have little sliders to do that, and it immediately will pump out a new image for you, okay? Super fast. Wonderful. So if you're sitting there going, no, my fantasy character's got long hair and she, she looks more brooding and you can play with the sliders and you can get that, right? So this takes care of that idea of, I'm looking for something very specific. This is hard to do in mid-journey. I want you to want to be clear. You cannot easily do this in mid-journey. So that's why I want you to use both tools. Go ahead. Holy cow. This woman has a great question. <laughs> it's almost like she's a plant. Okay, so all images made by Art Breeder in the public domain. You can pay to make your images private, but by default, they're public. What does that mean? Anybody can take your image and use it to breed their own image. So it's a, it's a, it's a community of creation, okay? And that's really the, the whole thing there. But you can use them for commercial purposes. So if you make an image that you really like, and this fits your character, by golly, that's your image. You can come back to it and download it again, make, make changes because, oh, your character's aged a little. Great, you can make those changes and you'll still have access to all of those things, okay? But it's in the public domain. That's, that's your give and take. Is this true of all of the AI things or is it um, just... Oh, there's another, I have another thing okay. on, the, on the copyright for mid-journey, okay. but it's very similar, yes. Okay, <laughs> it is in, it's strongly encouraged to cite Art Reader if you use it in a book. So in your kind of that copyright page, just mention, I created my cover. I used art in this book from Art Breeder. Thanks so much. They're awesome. Go, go, go do your own art. Don't think of it as people stealing your stuff. You got to break that notion in, in your mind, right? You're a part of a community of people creating art and you're sharing and it's collaborative and you're creating great things and you're going to learn what other people do and you can use what other people do to make something new. So don't think of it as stealing my stuff. Think of it as you guys are communally making art, okay? It's a very important distinction, I think, there. Hey, let's make some art. All right. Now, uh, here's Art Breeder over here. So when you come to Art Breeder, you have the opportunity, when you, once you sign in, and you can use your Google account to sign in, so you don't have to create something new. Um, makes it a secure sign-in. Up here, you have your various items that you can do. What we're going to do is we're going to do portrait, because it's just pretty easy to do it. All the other paths follow the same path, pattern of what we're going to be doing. So what you see me do now, you can do it on landscapes too, okay? So let's go ahead and do portraits. When you click on portraits, you're going to immediately be given two, or actually three options. Animate, don't worry about. The two on the left are the ones you're going to probably do the most. Upload, which is, here's a famous person, Brad Pitt, okay? My character looks kind of like Brad Pitt, but it, not Brad Pitt. Okay, but I want to start with Brad Pitt, okay? And I want to make something different. Okay, that's what you would use for upload. Or my character looks like my Uncle Bob, but it's not Uncle Bob because Uncle Bob will get really pissed off at Thanksgiving if he sees my stuff on his cover. <laughs> so we're going to start with Uncle Bob and we're going to change it to someone, you know, Uncle Jim. That nobody knows. Okay, so you'll start with something, you'll upload something, and then you'll go ahead and do the same process. Or you can start with compose. And what we'll do today is just compose because it's the easiest route to go. So if I click on Compose, now you're given something very scary. Ah, technology, scary. Don't worry about it. Okay, what we're gonna do is come up here on the, on, on, on the top left and we are gonna pick the parents of the breeding, right? So you're gonna pick the two images, three, four, five, seven images, and then you're gonna breed them all into something new, okay? As if they were actually like, you know, the parents. So once you click on that, you're given something right up here and we're gonna search for something. Let's search for, so I think it's Zendaya. There it is, give it to me, there she is. Okay, so we're gonna click on her, but you can click on anything else you want. You just scroll, there's an actual picture of her. Um, 
other pictures and everything. So we're going to pick this one because I like the style. So we're going to click it. You can see her face has been loaded up onto the left side. Now we want to breed her with somebody else. Select. Oh, shoot. I don't want two of the same thing. I'm going to come in here. I apologize for anyone who's a ginger, but we're going to go here and pick this girl. Let's see this one, right? It's kind of scary looking. All right. So we're going to scroll up. So what we do is we have these three, three random faces. Don't worry about them. We have two parents. What we're going to do is click, click, click. And now it's gone and done some work for us and started to breed people together. Now, this is kind of weird. Chaos is set way too high. All right, so I'm going to come down here. This actually normally is set, I think, at 1.4. Nope, definitely not. Here, I'm going to reset everything. No, it's too high. So you can see we have these, these features here on the left. And each and every one of these items here allows you to change the output of what's coming. So here, it's a little bit better. OK, so we have a girl here on the left. Let's say I want to change her to be more artistic. I want these, this picture to be more artistic. So we're going to hit the little slider and go up. And we'll, Typically, um, from I think it's negative two to two, so it's that's the range. Typically, you want to move by tenths and just test something. Go, hey, that looks pretty good. I can click here again and again, and you can see different options. You go, oh, I really like this one, or I like this one. Okay, so you can see how we're taking these images and we're breeding them together, and we're going to be playing with it. So here, like let's say my image is a lot darker. All right, we're going to increase. I'm sorry, we're going to decrease the brightness because I want this to be darker. OK, so you can see how the colors have come down a little bit. OK? You have all these other things here to do. Sharpness, you want to make them more happy. You want them to have a smile. So let's add a little bit of a smile to her face. Let's see if we can do that. OK, a little bit weird. I think it's because my chaos is too high. Let's set this to 0. Chaos means I'm going to take what you gave me and I'm going to kind of go crazy based on this one parameter. And if the parameter is too high, it can cause really wide deviations. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's see if I can clean that up a little bit. Um, no. You have to remember. You have to remember where you are on the left. Okay. So on the bottom, though, you can see it's storing all those images that I created. Okay. So so I can come back down here because they're saved under my account, under Matthew Buza. So here's, here's a few others that I was playing with yesterday. This is, you can do this in the starter. You know, I'm not even paying, I don't pay for our breeder. It's just, this is under the free account. You can just play with it, okay? Um, so you can see I was trying to change the age. So you can actually come in here on the left side and actually I think there's an age option. It's, yeah, it's up at the top. There it is, age. So if I want my person to be younger, I can go negative. Let's see if we get it. <laughs> so she got a little bit younger. That being said, okay, so I'm just showing you how to use it, right? So let's say you said, oh, I don't want a person. I want to go and create a landscape because I'm a fantasy writer. Okay, same thing here. So you can see these, here's a bunch of fantasy landscapes that I, I have made. So what's cool about this is, is this is a public, this is a public link. You, anybody can go and see this. And then what's cool about it is you can see all of my settings on the right side that I had for that. So you can remember chaos is 0.353, right? And I, 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 when I made this image, OK? So you can actually go back and reference those images. That is also public for somebody else to take and use. OK, so again, the same thing here is I want to create some, I want to create some landscape. You can click here and say, what's trending? So these are really popular images that people are using. And you can just sit here and just doom scroll until you find something you really like. Right? Like, OK, I like this thing. And then I want um, something that's green, right? And I say, OK, great. Have at it, crazy man. And let's go ahead and hit three of them. And you can see kind of how it's blending this rocky with a green structure. See how that works? Good. Is there any issue with if, say, uh, yeah. Can yeah, they can do that. That's part of the sharing of the community. Yeah. I have a question about that. What if somebody 
photos. Happens with stock photos all the time. So if you buy a stock photo that somebody per want purchases as well, when you purchase a stock photo, it doesn't become exclusive, right? You just purchase the rights right. to it. You just purchase it, and I. You've seen your. One your, of my books, the cover I used to one of my books, I walked into Barnes and Noble one time, and there was a traditional published book yeah. with this artwork. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so with landscape, you have other options like trees and mesa and vegetation. Let's see if we can add a river. Let's add a river into this. So if you said, okay, add me a river, sometimes it will cut you a river, but it will sometimes, depending on how much you, you weighted that, I weighted that all the way to a one, that might've been a little too high. And I can play with it and maybe downsize it. Okay, so you can see there's now a river running through that arch, okay? And, and based on how heavy you weight certain things, it can overpower the, the image. Sometimes you just have to restart. So and the, one second, the hard thing about <laughs> both the art reader and the mid journey is that there's a lot of churn to get something you'd like, okay? So you're not gonna sit there and go, oh, these are my perfect two images and boom, it's exactly what I, I thought. It's never that way. I'll show you examples of how long it takes to create something that you might actually use. Go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. you said that like the, the free version, you get like three downloads or whatever. Yeah. So all of this stuff that you're doing is not considered a download. It's just when you actually physically, physically download, download it into okay. your account. So you can play to your heart's content. Play yeah, and learn the tool. Yeah, learn the tool. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, here, Joel. Here. I, I just can't hear. Is it just three downloads? Oh, yeah. Okay. So on the left. So I'll leave the left column and then I'll come down on the right column. So chaos, chaos is how crazy you want the two images to, to mix or deviate. Snow, mountain, art, valley, sea, red sky, red, blue, hue, brightness on the bottom, fog, sunlight, architecture, trees, mesa, vegetation, river, green, sharpness, and saturation. So there's a lot of options to play with. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering about, um, like you have to have certain amount of resolution. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people are doing is they're taking their images and going into like Photoshop or some of the free tools and doing this upscaling. So Photoshop allows you to upscale an image and does their own AI to fix the upscaling issues. So a lot of people are using that. I think there's another tool called Lightroom that's doing the same thing as well. And I think there are some free programs as well that are doing that. And that's really the DPI is what you're concerned about. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. for print, it has to be a certain level or Kindle, it has to be another. Exactly. Yeah. So getting around a lot of that stuff. Um, with Mid Journey, you get really large images. So you're kind of like default already really big. So you're almost, in essence, scaling down off of those images. Right. Things like this, you may have to play with those tools a little bit. Yeah. But if you want just like a small little portrait head that sits up in the corner of your thing, you just make sure your DPI is set in the right, the right number. And if it's a small image, you don't have a problem with that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you want characters here? Okay, same idea. So a lot of people use this for like kind of D and D or um, Space Marine type of stuff. But you said you wanted a Viking. Okay, sure. What the heck? Let's do a Viking. I know for some people this may not be super interesting. Um, so here you go. This looks like the. Viking guy, but let's let's cross him with some here, some Viking lady. Let's 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 do the let's do a mix. See what happens. Huh? I think it's way more towards the man than the woman. Um, <laughs> his chest, that's a nice chest there, though, on the right side. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can say here, like, oh, I want my thing to be more female, and let's see if we can weight it up towards the woman. A little bit more androgynous there. Um, Let's let's just weigh it big time. Let's see if we can get the buxom lady that we want. Yep, there it is. So you can you can start to push the envelope um, based on what you want. You know, like whatever you want to do. So you got you have a lot of a lot of creativity. You want to add a jacket. You want a suit. You want to make him a let's make her a ninja. Why not? That's not what I would wear to conquer. So you can see how wild it just turned. So you, depending on how much you weight it, it, it can affect the image drastically. No, I have not any wolf abs. You see, this is very stylized, so this wouldn't necessarily work with the wolf abs thing, but I, I, yeah, I understand. 
now you're polluting my, look at what my, my account looks like. I had to, <laughs> so I, <laughs> this, this guy's really confused. No, um, <laughs> on my mid journey, um, I had to warn my friend because we share the same server. I said, I'm about to create a lot of weird art. Don't think, don't think wrong of me because I'm just testing a bunch of stuff for the talk on Sunday. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. All right, so any questions here? So then also, um, this probably fits more of the fiction writers um, in the room. Um, just to get characters. All right, let's do a furry. Uh, I warned it. <laughs> Furries are fun until you get into what they do on the weekends. Okay, so let's do a. We're gonna do a fox. All right, we're gonna make um, we're gonna make Tony's persona. I know that term. Oh yeah, I'm with the kids. Let's do. Oh, here we go. We're gonna cross Tony with that one. Here, Tony, you can put this on your uh, social media account and be really cool with the kids. That's a good one. That's a good one. So anyway, you can see how you can make characters. Now, if you have a story that has anthropomorphized animals, the furry thing might actually work well for you. OK? So just as an idea. All right. Any questions? That is Art Breeder. If you, uh, if you have an image that you want to start with, and you We will have that in a few weeks at the speed of their developing. So. I'll go into mid-journey and talk a little bit about how people are trying to get the same face. So here's the holy grail. I have a character. Now I want to spawn a million images with my character in it, but with that character. We cannot easily do that right now. And when I say right now, I mean today, this week. <laughs> because it's this hour. Because God knows that is what every single... I can't tell you I'm in so many forums talking about mid-journey. They're like begging please, can I have a referenced face that you put onto other characters? That's all I want. That When that happens, um, it's game over. So, when that happens, then I'll come up with another, all I want is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are, oh, not from the beginning. Okay, so here we'll go to the, uh, okay, so that's Art Breeder. Any questions? Go ahead, you got a question? Exactly. Yeah. So that is the biggest challenge with the AI, and they where all the quote unquote art rely sits, especially when we get into uh, mid journey. The art is in the prompt, and it's not in necessarily how to use the tool. It's how do you craft that text so the AI goes out and makes you what what it wants. Every image on this page I have made, these are all my images. Okay. If anyone wants them, you can. You can't have the top middle one. You can't have the one on the right, but I'll let you have the rest um, because I'm using this. <laughs> but uh, 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 Google, <laughs> Mid Journey. No. Um, so Mid Journey launched this year, 2020, to sometime earlier, mid midpoint of this year, June, I think, some time frame, um, and it has caught like wildfire. And this is kind of the cornerstone of where most people are spending a lot of their time. And we'll get into it and I'll show you it. It's gonna be kind of scary for people with tech phobias, but you can overcome it. Once you get everything set up, it's super easy to use, okay? Um, text input, so what does that mean? It means you're writing some text, which we're really good at, um, but us authors are too good at writing text, so you gotta, you gotta kind of become more Hemingway-ish, short, choppy descriptions. Um, when, and then they will go off and create images, and then you've got to work in the churn. And what you kind of said is the AI doesn't necessarily give you exactly what you want. You've got to try and you're almost wrestling with the AI to get what you want. Okay? It's similar to stable diffusion and similar to Dolly 2. Dolly 2 and stable diffusion are also text input image return programs. Okay? And you can create little anything, literally, literally anything. I, I want to I stress that. Mid Journey made a really smart thing. They said, we don't want to create a website and spend all this time making a website to have a user create an account, do some action, and return images, because that takes a lot of time and effort. So they went and used a third-party tool called Discord. And this is sort of like a chat tool. Um, think of like your messenger tool, but a little bit more powerful. And we'll show you what it looks like. 
but they use that tool in order to be the interface between the text in image return. Does that make sense? So they used another tool to do the con to to return and manage your your images. Okay, and we'll we'll go we'll talk a lot more about what that is. Any questions? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yep, and that's what you got. Uh, so there are a lot of, in mid-journey, you're not allowed to use a lot of words, like any type of sexualized word you can't use. Blood, they don't want. They Certain famous people you're not allowed to use. Um, uh, any type of gore or anything of that nature, you can't do that. Now, if that tickles your fancy, which it does for me, you can use stable diffusion, they don't care, okay? Stable Diffusion is going to get all the nasty articles written about it in the next year. I can hear the keys crushing right now about, I can't believe they made this image with this famous person doing this terrible thing. <laughs> I can already hear it because they're already doing it. <laughs> all right. So all the effort, so Midjourney is trying to stay PG rated R, but not, you know, adult. Okay, so what does it cost? Starter, it's free. They give you 80 images right off the bat. Now, these images are not 80 created images. It's 80 images worth of CPU time. So remember, when you create an image, you're crunching away on a computer, and that corresponds with a certain amount of time. Basic is about $10 a month, and you get 200 jobs. And again, jobs is not one action. It's kind of like four. <laughs> so think of it in that terms. I pay $30 a month, and I use the unlimited mode, which is the relaxed mode, the second bullet there. I can put it into relaxed mode and I can do as many images as I want. It just takes a little bit longer and I haven't really noticed the difference between relaxed and like fast. So I sit in relaxed and it doesn't chew up any of my com computation time. So 200 jobs, how many jobs does an image typically take? So to get something that you want to use, you're gonna probably use like 40 of those jobs. It's because it takes time and you gotta hit refresh and you gotta, I'm sorry, you gotta re-roll, you gotta clean it up, you gotta tweak your 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 prompt. This is another one I made. I made this one for Linda. I made this one on my phone on the crapper. <laughs> Linda's sitting there, I need to know how to do this. I'm like, fine. <laughs> yeah, I made that for Linda. Yeah. Oh, that was I made that really fast. That was actually that was on my third or fourth try. Yeah. So, okay, then that goes back to that problem where it's like, take this face and body and put it on everywhere else. I specified torso up. So I would have to go back in and, and clean that up. One of the best things that people have been doing to kind of get around that problem is to find a famous person that kind of matches what you want and then just hammer that name into your prompt so that any type of character you create has their face. That's how they're getting around that problem right now. Okay. I think I think if somebody sits, I'll show you one of the images. Yeah, they're reading your book. Yeah, they're reading your book. <laughs> so a lot. So I've seen uh, people are having a lot of fun with Chris Hemsworth, um, Henry Cavill, and The Rock right now. So they're putting them in everything. So I've seen a Shrek Rock. I've seen Flash Gordon, uh, Chris Hemsworth images. Like they're having fun, and it's all done in fun. So I don't think they're getting a lot of problem. But if you end up using like if you create like a graphic comic and it's like, hey, that's Don, Donald Glover, you know, you shouldn't do that, right? That would be illegal. They'll, hit, they'll probably get hit by it. Yeah. So there, there's, a, there's, there's very clear lines and then there's a lot of gray zone. Don't operate in the gray zone, you'll probably be fine. Okay. All right. Can you upload a photo? So no, not very well. Not very well. They can reference images for style, but not necessarily. Hey, because I was trying today, I was like, here's an image of me at a, you know, I was out, I was in Belgium. I was drinking a beer and I took a picture. I said, hey, I want, I want you to paint this. And it just could not do it. It just took the style and it was making just wild things, like things that didn't even make sense. So anyway, the art is getting the prompt right. We've talked about that. It's going to take a lot of tries and I'm going to show you what those tries look like and how to get to something that, that is useful. Um, it does support referenced artists and people. Now, this is really cool. If you have a style and there's a famous artist, and I'll show you, actually, go back. So here on the left, 
So does everybody remember the movie Alien? You know, Sigourney Weaver. And the alien and all the aesthetics were designed by this artist named H.R. Geiger. Okay? Very famous artist, really well done. This is my prompt for a zombie with H.R. Geiger's influence. Okay, so I, I used an artist to then trigger the style of art that I wanted out. Okay, does that make sense? So, okay, I used, a lot of people are now using artists and reference people as basically the base to get the style and the aesthetics that they want. Okay? There's a lot of updates, guys, and you're going to see them. They're so cool. And what was the so this is the, this is the beta. So which one of these is real, which one's not? They're all fake. Every single one of these images is fake. Okay? This is the level of, of power that Midjourney is. I made none of these. Okay? That would be the important one. But this is, so very often they open the beta mode because they're testing new features and they want, 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 they want the, the community to, you know, interact with it. So middleman is rugged man. Okay? It came from this comment on, on Reddit, on, this, on the Midjourney subreddit, which I encourage you to join because you learn a lot by just watching and being in the comments. This is his comment. This was his text that he input to Midjourney. A portrait of a rugged Tamil man with black hair and black eyes, dusky, no beard, scar above the right eyebrow, facial symmetry, close up, facing forward, see in the background, sepia mode, 150 millimeter lens, 8K, photorealistic, HDR f-stop 8, 1.8, high octane render, Unreal Engine 5, cinematic, highly detailed, and if you don't get my aspect ratio right, I'm going to quit. So, <laughs> oh, by the way, use the new beta mode. So that was basically what he put in. Okay, and I'm going to show you what's, what some of these, these inputs look like. It can go crazy like this. Okay, so I took this. I literally just copied and pasted, and that's what I got. Okay, but he has a beard. I know. Great question. Goes back to what you were asking. The AI doesn't always do what you, the, you want the AI to do. <laughs> yeah, but because I, think, because I think it picked up on Tamil Man and most of the learned images that it had from learning Tamil men tend to have beards, it couldn't, it couldn't remove the beard. So if, yeah, I know, and there's no scar. If you maybe said, I want somebody who's in the north of India, fair skinned, maybe, maybe you could get somebody with no beard, maybe. But if, you might have a little beard, but I want to stress this is a fake image, right? There is no referenced image that, oh, hey, this is a Getty reporter, and gosh darn it, that's 5% away from my image. There is literally no image in the world that looks like this, except that guy. Okay, so I think that's this showing you guys what you can do, especially when on this on the subreddit for mid journey, everyone by kind of best practices, they post their prompt so that you can then take it and try it yourself. Okay, so let's talk about a little about styles. Center, um, every one of these is mine. So I have HR Geiger. Top one, I have ink on parchment. So if you're looking like if you imagine if you're writing a book that has kind of a parchment feel or it's like a discovered image or something like that, ink on parchment. One of my favorite things is to do is to put the prompt movie poster for book covers. You get some really great composition. Um, and I had obviously zombie World War I, 70s horror movie poster. And that's what I got out of that. Uh, Zadislaw Brzezinski, he's a Polish kind of surrealist author. Um, that was my zombies World War I prompt, but with him as the person as the, the referenced artist. So you can tell, um, essentially all of these are zombie prompts, but I, I've changed the referenced artist. And again, that's just a piece of text. Uh, this artist, right, included in the text. Okay, and that's how, that's how wildly different it can be. All right? Or you can make stuff for your kids. <laughs> right, I got my two girls dancing and my, my daughter, um, my oldest wanted uh, Something of her, like kind of a lightsaber with a Jedi thing. She wanted that. So. Copyright, great question. Most of your images will get published to the to um, uh, their kind of main catalog of images. Uh, so it kind of has the same thing with ArtReader that your images are in the public domain. You can pay to have your images private, but there's a, you have to pay for that. It's like an add-on plan. Um, and then if you make more than a million dollars a year, eh, tough, tough it. You got to pay a little bit more. Um, so <laughs> for most of us, though, it's basically I make an image, I'm paying to use it, I can use it for whatever I want. Again, reference mid-journey that you used it 
is the best practice because they're using, I don't know which one of the open source, I think it's 4.0 4 or something like that. And it says, if you could please reference that we created the image. Any questions so far? So how about art in your book? Yeah, these are going to my next book, okay? Full page spreads, it's a World War I zombie book, okay? Are you going to do them black and white? Or? Yeah, I'm going to do them black and white. Okay. Yeah. That was my bit. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. I might try and see what happens if it's color and see what the, what it does to the price, but then I'll probably revert back to black. Price I know. Candy. I can't imagine. So what about using it for your covers? Absolutely. The one on the left is going to be my cover. I think that I'm going to go with. So again, that was a prompt from MidJourney, and then I made that in Canva. If you want to know how to do it next week, that's next week. Two weeks from now. I think the image on the right will be my back cover. So. Yeah. so anyway, so yes, you can use it for covers. Okay, so here's referenced image. Top right image is Ron Perlman. Okay, bottom right image is, is Zendaya. So I'm just trying to pick people that are, you obviously can somewhat tell who they are, but you can see I've got a grizzled cop sitting at his desk depressed. It was kind of a you know prompt, Ron Perlman. Okay, and then Zendaya in a spacesuit. <laughs> All right, so you can use them. Um, it does not, you cannot give it an image from Art Breeder and say, here's my character, please make this image. It doesn't do that, at least not yet. Okay. You wanna see how it works? Let's see. Why not? So the first, the first hard thing is that you're gonna have to do is uh, get an account with, with Discord. So you can use it through a web browser like I do here with Chrome. You can use it uh, on your phone <coughs> and with the Discord app. Okay. So, 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 yeah, so basically you can first, um, when you first join, well, this was a couple months ago when, they're, when, they're, when, they're, when the mid-journey Discord server was under a million people, they blew through the limit that Discord had on the size of a server Discord like freaked out. They're like, how did you do this? So they, they immediately hit 2 million people and they started having to kick people out. And so the big thing now is that if you join their Discord here, so I have it, see the sailing, the sailing bot or whatever, you can join that, but they have all these sub little groups that you can jump into, which are really cool to watch. Like um, I wanna watch people make environments. Okay, so when I click on the environments, now there's gonna be this this thread of people actually doing work. And the problem is there's so many people doing work in here that it can be very dizzying to watch. And you really don't know what's going on. That's why I suggest you to go to the subreddit for Midjourney and see and see the learning there. But you, you watching Yeah. Yeah, like I, I think they've already updated a bunch here. So no, the, Discord is part of Midjourney? No. Midjourney is using Discord. It's another company. So it's, it would be like Apple is using I don't know, like Chrome to do something, right? So it's a different company. So Midjourney said, I wanna use Discord to deliver the images for, to people. And I don't want them to use our website. So you can see people are, are in real time updating things. So we're watching this in real time, them create stuff, okay? The one that where everybody started was up here, which was the newbies uh, thing. But this is like, it's literally unusable. It became so unusable, it's so difficult. So what they encourage people to do is to create their, once you sign in, you can, well, so there's three things. There's, um, there's a web browser that's this on the phone through the app, or you can actually download Discord to your computer and actually have it run locally on your computer, okay? Doesn't matter which one those is, pick the one you like the most. I use web browser and my phone. And they encourage you to come over here and make your own server, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask for the MIDI journey bot to come into your server and live there so that you can just do it yourself quietly in your own server. There's nobody polluting the feed. So for example, my author friend and I, Brad, we have created our own server <clears throat> where we have, we have invited the mid journey bot in. This is what mid journey wants you to do because they, don't, they can't manage their 2 million person server anymore. They want you to bring it into your own thing. And that's what we've done here. And that's what I would encourage you guys to do as well. So the terms you're looking for is mid-journey, Discord. Once you get it working, you want to create your own server, which is just this simple button right here. 
this plus button and then follow all the prompts and make your stuff. And then there's a, there's look for a, uh, just Google search, uh, welcome, you know, invite the mid journey bot to my discord server, something like that. Yeah, my friend did it. He's really, he's good at, he's, he's not as good as tech wise as me, but I just sent him a link and he was able to put it together. So. And there's a separate cost for the discord no. server? No, what's great is because you've, you've brought your bot over, it knows your account and it knows all, it knows that you have an account with them. So you sign up through? You sign up through Midjourney, and then you can, you work here then, and it manages your account. Like I just got charged again. Like I've been on it for over a month. I just got my second month charge. And you can. No, it knows who you are. Exactly, because you're sending the commands. It knows who you are. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it works off of username because it uses Discord as the trust as the trust interface for it. So, so most people use their own name. Um, no, most people don't. It's all, but I do because I don't I don't do anything that would negatively impact the health of my public persona. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so far. Well, we let's change that, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm only a month in. Um, so from here, you have basically, and I, I've got my, my microphone on here because I'm recording this and we're going to hopefully upload this to the YouTube channel if you want to watch this again. And we're recording this whole screen. So I, you've created an account with Midjourney. You've opened up an account on Discord. You've signed up on your free account. So here you are in the message field. And this is the first hurdle that everybody, after you know the sign up hurdle, um, the first hurdle you have to do is like, how, what am I doing? How do I send a prompt? So it's forward slash because they're software developers and they're not real people like you guys. Um, the first thing you do is at forward slash, it brings up all of these options. The only one that matters to you or anybody who's trying to create is imagine and it automatically selects that you just hit enter. Ooh. So now it's brought that down. It says forward slash imagine prompt and the cursor is flashing, it is waiting. The mid-journey bot wants you to make some art. So I want somebody to give me something. Sorry, say it again. Go ahead, you got it. Oh, give me a smog, give me smog. Smog on a pile of gold. I want to show you that this is actually working and I want you to give me a color. What? Red. Okay. I always like the term splashes of red. And let me see. We're just going to go that simple. We hit enter. And immediately it begins to work. So it's staying, waiting to start. So what it's going to do is give you a four panel test of what it's creating. Okay. And you can see there's, I don't know, maybe you guys can't see it. Up here, there's a percentage. So it's, it's working right now. And it's at 18%. 31%. And so you can kind of see it's starting to take form. And I'm in the relaxed mode right now, so it doesn't cost me anything to make these images, but it does work pretty fast. And in the Hobbit, yes. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> what is it? It's supposedly slower, but I have not seen it be very much slower. So, okay. And so what we're doing is we're looking, we're looking. It looks like Looks like maybe that top left one. At any moment, even though it's not done, you can click on it and take a quick look and see what it's making. It may not make something that's really good. I may go back and do your dragon sitting on gold. So while it's working, let's start another one. Um, a dragon on a pile of gold. What? Splashes of blue. We have, the people have spoken. Okay. <laughs> So it's finished. And how do you know it's finished? So it's already starting to work on my next one. So we'll scroll up just a little bit. And I want somebody to like say which one kind of looks like, I, we don't like any of those, right? God, those are all garbage. Little refresh button. This is the re-roll button. It says re-roll my prompt. I don't like any of those. Do it again. So now it's here doing it again. Okay. So, and we're going to, we're going to keep working to find something that we like. And if we, if you do this, my, my rule is you work with a prompt, you re-roll three or four times, you don't like it, you gotta go back to your prompt. Try it again, change something else. No, it's still working. See how they're working together? This is 81%, this one's at 50%. Okay, I've, I've, 
I've had like four or five, and then what you do is you hit this buffer thing. It says, you've got too many going on. <laughs> you need to wait your turn, young man. And uh, and it does. It just cues them. So then you got to just sit, maybe go take care. Why are the kids screaming? You know, that type of thing. And that type of thing. So, okay. So we've hit something here. Maybe. I don't know. This one looks kind of cool. This one looks... All right. Let's just pick one. Let's say the, the third one. Yeah. So the numbering scheme goes as follows. One, two, three, four. And why is that important? Oh, you got all these little buttons down here. U1, V1, U2, V2, so on. What do these mean? If you hit U, that means you, I say I want to take that image and I want you to make it bigger, cooler, and more detailed. And the term is upscale. V means I like the composition of this, but you are still really bad, AI bot. I want you to try it again, but I want this composition. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take, let's take the third one, and I want to do versions on it, and I want to upscale it so we can see the two. Okay? So let's scroll down. We're doing a lot of work here, guys. We got, we got images we got to look at. We're artists, all of us. Um, again, our dragon does not look very good, so we want to keep working on this. Right? So let's keep rolling it. We're going to get you your red dragon on the pile of gold eventually. So here it is. So you can see, if, if everyone remembers, we went for this image here, this third one, for our versioning. And you can see it's working on that right... Oh gosh, I got so many things going on. What happens is, while something's working, it stays in the feed. But when it's done, it creates a new comment at the bottom. So here we go. We have our third image has been versioned. And we have three new images that kind of change composition, style, a little, little bit of difference. And you can kind of say, Hey, I kind of like that guy, all right? So, so that's four new versions of your original version. Yes, but it's, it's, it's changed. There's some, there's some changes. So let's say you like the first one. So we're going to upscale number one. Meanwhile, all my other images are still cranking along. We got 90% here. That one's done. Let's see, if, let's see what's finished. We'll scroll down. Sometimes you can get so many images going, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, all right, great. So we got one that's done here. Uh, let's see if our dragon's ready. Uh, he's, maybe he's playing in the, in the gold. Let's do this bottom right one. He's wallowing. He's, he's cozy. He's, it's smog, you know? Sorry. All right, so here we have an image that's done. All right, kind of stylized, maybe not perfect, but I wanted to show you some of the other things. So you said blue. Can we, can we find that like you want to change the header and face specifically? No, that's the next week. That's, so, so to be honest, a lot of people are going, taking their image and they're taking it to Photoshop to clean it up and specifically faces. That's what, what they want is to be able to take the same face and put it on multiple things. But I think they have some technical hurdle of making the faces repeatable. And so they're overcoming the face problem first, and then they're going to give us the feature of carrying the face forward. Faces are a problem, and I'm going to show you examples of that. Eyes are, really Eyes are very weird. Mouths can be weird. It's very strange. You can get some like googly eye people. It's very strange. So can you take like that and then superimpose text over it? You can then take that image and put it in any other tool where you can put text over the front. Yes. And I'll show you examples of people doing that. So okay. Now you say, oh, my goodness, what are my new buttons? Okay, so you can say, uh, you know what, I upscaled this. This isn't what I want. Make me more variations. That's the V. And if I click on that, it'll give me four new images that I can start over with. Max upscale. So that means this image is really good. I want you to take it to the roof, buddy. Okay, I want to go all the way up. I'm in relaxed mode. I can't do, I can hop out real quick, but I don't want to waste time. Um, it will then take it even further and become larger image and even more refined and more, more crazy. Some people say, you know what? This is too grainy. I don't like this. They have these two little buttons here, light upscale redo and a beta upscale redo. And so what they do is they kind of clean up the styling a little bit, OK? So we'll go ahead and do light upscale. And then this new one that they have here is called remaster. Give me two new images. This is close, but give me two new ones. And we'll go ahead and click on that. OK, let's see. What, what do we got down here? What's happened since I've been talking? OK, so we got our little dragon. Eh, not great, but he's kind of playing in gold, whatever. So you can kind of see how, how, how frustrating it can be with the prompt. And so you got to go back in and say, at this point, I think we would just try something new. Try a different prompt, maybe add some more, more language. These are very short prompts. People tend to, there's obviously with the internet, everybody falls into camps. Um, some people like short prompts. Some people like long prompts. 
find out what works best for you. Yeah. So when you're first starting out, I would highly recommend, especially if you're writing long prompts, to have like a text notepad and you're you're pasting that in there to save it, right? Or you can just come in here and you can just highlight the text, you know, and then just copy it and then you can reuse it again. So here it is. I hit remaster. And so it, it did a decent job, huh? So we got kind of a, but we have a dragon that has a head in the middle of its body. And here's one kind of standing on the body of something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, but but you can see how you can see how we have evolved the image over time, and you have to make a decision on whether or not that works for you. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Let's just see some other examples here. What when you do make a big image, one of your upscaled images, and even upscale to max, you have the ability to go to the web to view it. Now, this will take you to Midjourney. Midjourney has a really nice. Uh, uh, place for your account to live. It's storing all of your images. So let's actually go and look at what that is. When I click on that web button here, right here, it will take me to my mid-journey account for me. Okay? And I can look at my archive. So if I hit archive, it should refresh. Let's see if it refreshes and gives me all my dragons. There you are all my dragons. Okay? So these are all the images I've made today, September 18th. I've been a busy boy today. Um, I was playing with some some wildlife stuff earlier today, and then I did a bunch of other stuff as well. So you, it, what it does is it stores all of your images for the day. So here's me from yesterday. I was trying to make some artwork for our walls at home, another use. I was trying to get something for like both my daughters. So if you click on it, it shows you the image, and then it shows you your prompt, two girls walking through the woods, splashes of blue, uh, image weight six. Don't worry about that. And then how do you save, what do you save to the different? If I click on save, it saves to my desktop as a JPEG or a PNG. And then, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't wanted to delete anything. Oh, no. um, I'm trying to get some like tree wall art from my house. Um, so here, family tree, blue flowers. You know, simple, very clean prompt, you know, can get you wildly different images, right? Um, here's where I was making my rugged man a couple days ago. I was trying Harrison Ford prompts, um, beard, no beard. It was just a straight Harrison Ford. Just give me Harrison Ford. I want to see what you can do. And it gave me that. Okay. Um, I was playing with some uh, kind of alien, uh, uh, kind of uh, our ink and paper. So I think I had ink and pen, alien anatomy, journal text. That was the prompt. And so it's really cool is it stores your prompt for you because you remember what it was. Okay. I'll show you a little bit of like what happens with faces. Let's go to Linda's thing. When Linda said, show me what you can do, here it is. I was a very busy guy on the, on the toilet. All right, so let's look at a couple faces here. So you see how off the lips are? A little bit with the eyes. The nose is a little crooked. What people are doing is they're going into Photoshop. Artists, artists are going in and cleaning that up. So they're using this as the base and then actually fixing it. That's what they're doing now until, until you know, mid-journey fixes faces. Um, so if you see again here, so Linda, I only sent you like five of them because like, because of a hundred of them or a lot of them were off. So if you zoom in, I believe her mouth is a little off. But you can see, oh, here, I'll show you my prompt. So this is the one I, I had in the, in the presentation. So here it is, hyper-realistic fairy sitting in a forest, playing with fire in her hand. Where's the fire? Where's the hand? Didn't get it. But I lucked out because I got a decent photo. I got a good face, a decent face. Beautiful face, color, hair, orange with purple, dramatic lighting. Okay. And, and then if you want a full body, very often you have to specify full body with splashes of purple, you know, full body. You want to actually like, you got to say it. Otherwise, it's not going to give you full body. All right. Um, let me just see a couple others. This is one of my favorites. I'm going to use this for, like, I have a fantasy book I'm going to use. Mysterious figure in a cloak walking through a sandstorm in the desert. Very, very, yeah, I know, it's like, dude, very stylized, very artistic, kind of oil painting like. You can almost think of it's like kind of an 18th century painting. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Let's assume you were doing the prompt and you said in the style of Disney. Would that be something that a Disney person would no. be searching for? No, this is very popular. So give me a fox. 
uh, comma, I'm sorry, forward slash imagine, uh, Fox uh, in, uh, let's say, Pixar style. Okay. So it'll start working. The Pixar style is the key. Like if you're looking for that style, you've got to say it because it's going to go out and look at stuff that's kind of Pixar y and then use that as the way it's thinking. But you can use keywords like that? Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's referencing the style. Like, for example, if you were really good at Blender or one of the 3D art tools, and you went out there and you made something that, golly gee whiz, could be in a Pixar movie, is Pixar going to you know, take down your image? No, they can't, right? Now, if you went out and made Merida from Brave and you put her in your artwork, they're going to get you, right? That's the difference, right? So you can kind of see here, let's see, I think this one on the left might be the best. Let's see what happens. We're at 93%. Let's upscale it and clean it up. And I'll show you guys other examples of what, what other people are doing. So here, this is the third one. So we'll go ahead and upscale three. Any questions so far? I know it can be a little overwhelming, but but you can see once you get it all set up, how easy it is to use, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's um, your imagination. Okay. I know three writers who are... Um, that's what you're doing all day. All day long making landscapes. Yeah, it's, like, it's so addictive. Like it's so addictive. Like, no, but look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this is my little book cover. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The book. So it's it's a 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 for book covers, if you like specify movie colors, uh, posters, but sometimes you can get wording in there, so you, that's not good. You want to be careful about that. Um, so if you're looking for book covers, I would try specifying um, kind of, there's other styles like collage style. There's a lot of like cool phrasing that people have found works really good. So you gotta, that's part of the art. It's part of being an artist, just you know, learning what people are typing. Let's see what else I got down here. I promise I don't have anything inappropriate. Um, so here I was doing more anatomy stuff down here. So here you can see it's I was using the HR Geiger uh, insp inspiration. That's obviously the image in the presentation there. Here's me doing some uh, ink and anatomy drawings. So again, this is detailed drawing, dark, gritty, stylized, intricate details, pen and ink. Those are the type of things you're using to describe that. Th these are on parchment, so I specify Soldier zombie drawing on parchment. Face is all messed up. Arms are all messed up. Whatever, but it it put put it on a piece of parchment for me. Okay, the parchment is part of the art at this point. Okay. Yeah, I mean you can, you can really imagine what your you know what you can your imagination, guys. And again, it, it just because I'm a kind of a darker style art uh, no. uh, author, um, I have a lot more darker stuff. Um, but you can just, you know, you can make fun, happy, like if you're doing a, you know, kid's book or something like that, you can do playful stuff as well. You have to specify the colors and specify the environment so that it, it matches that. Uh, no, I, I mean, it's, it's so easy to make. If I just get inspired, I just do a couple prompts and then I walk away because I can do it on my phone. And, it, and the phone is connected to the same server here. So... If I make a couple prompts, I can come back later and check it out. I can look at it on my phone too. Can two people be an up You can have a million. It doesn't matter how many. Um, oh yeah, no, um, no, just create one. Yeah, create one account and you guys just share it. Yeah, yeah no big deal. Um, so let's go back to the talk. So what I'll do here is. Um, I know. I'll just run through it real quick. Any other questions people have regarding this? There's, it's literally a wide open. So would it be like the style of a particular artist? Yep. 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 <laughs> right here. Right here. So I specified two artists on the bottom. And so it did it in those styles. OK. Uh, let me uh, jump ahead. Now, when you were showing the pictures before of the girls, were that, is that actually there for the chart? No. Okay. No, I just. So you cannot do like. You can't do it. Not yet. 
not yet. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so how to use Midjourney? Obviously, we talked about it. Um, you know, work on the prompts. That's the hardest part. Understand your style versus real versus artistic. So if you're trying to go for real, you're going to be using terms like realistic, photorealism, 8K, terms like that. If you want a style, then you got to specify the style. So for example, you have you have a steampunk Albert Einstein in a Baroque outfit. Um, then you have some type of um, kind of ma manga anime style for the girl. You have a chicken, a little ch little little bird. So you can you can be very playful. It can be a lot of fun. And then obviously you can do landscapes. Landscapes are it. If Mid Journey does anything really well, it is landscapes um, and experiences and things that that are not specific <laughs> that a human eye can say that doesn't look right. Um, landscapes it does a really good job at. Okay. And I'll show you. So what are other people using it for? Graphic novels, web comics. They're using pen and ink as the inspiration. Remember what I said, ink and pen on parchment. So they're, they're keeping the, the style of art in the prompt consistent. And then they're giving different prompts. And so they keep getting the same, specifying black and white, ink and pen on parchment, house with villagers, OK? Then they bring it into a program, and then they add the blocks and 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 the and the captions. Okay. Is, are the captions part of the domain? No. They, so they get the image. So each one of these, I, I don't want to speak for the artist, but I, I would imagine each image here is a separate image prompt. So this took one, two, three, four, like you know, eight images, right? And so they brought it into another tool. There's a bunch of uh, comic-based tools where they can bring in the images, make the panels, add in the, the dialogue boxes, add in the actual text, and then they make the comic. And they own that. They own everything, yeah. You can turn your short story into a graphic novel, absolutely. What else are people doing? So I know we have some children's book authors in here, so maybe some juvenile authors, you know, maybe uh, young chapter books. You can obviously do very playful stuff. None of these images are mine. I'll show you where I got these. Um, but obviously, style. You can you can reference the style that you want. Uh, maybe a specific. Yeah. Okay. You're challenging me. We're going to do South Park stuff <laughs> at the end. So here's a couple images. So here's a, obviously a piece of art, not mine. I, I stole it. I know. I she they shared it. Um, and I took I took the the prompt and and you know the stuff above is 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 what it is. But the important thing I bolded here, artwork by these people, <laughs> hand drawing. And so it pulled in those artists' styles and then tried to create something based on what they asked. Okay, now is that stealing from the artists? Some of those artists would say yes, unless you're stealing their IP. It have long silver hair though. Yeah, so again, it missed, right? The hands are kind of weird. And the hands are kind of weird. I know that, like, so they're working on hands and face. That's, it's alien, so yeah. who knows? But again, you can take it in, and if it's if it's stylized enough, you can maybe overlook it, or you can go in and try to fix it yourself. Okay? I know we have vampire writers in this house. So again, I found a I found a vampire kind of realistic but very stylized. And again, here's the prompt: bokeh, gothic, glossy, Tom Bragshaw. Uh, Stanley Art Germ Lau. I don't know who these people are, but these are artists that they that they liked, and so they tried to have their request so fulfilled. A, so you, as the writer, if you are using these for covers and things, the important thing for you to learn is design. Yeah, and Mid Journey does a very good job at composition of the art, and so that's you're having to find something that works. And because a lot of us are little AI engines ourselves. And we are bathed in very talented artists. We have an innate expectation on what works, right? So you look at this and you go, that works. Why? We don't know why, but I know it works, right? Because you have experienced so much good art. You don't need to have a composition class, right? You can just say, that really works. I like that, right? So on and so forth. This is something I made. My, my friend wants to do a space marine. He wants to, to, to pioneer kind of the Chuck Tingle for space marines. <laughs> and uh, we were trying very hard to get, we were trying to get the, uh, the kind of the Conan Barbarian lady on the edge of the, uh, the, the uh, space marine, but we couldn't do it. But we ended up getting this and we thought it was pretty cool. 
very simple prompt, space marine sci-fi fantasy dramatic lighting movie poster. That, that got that. So you can see the difference between something like this and like this. It's just your taste. It's what you like. And sometimes you can get really cool things that really work. And then you just go with it. If you're very, very specific and you're like, I can't move unless that space marine's arm is here. I'm sorry, you're going to have to go learn how to be an artist. Yeah. Or wait three weeks when we start to have the arm tool that allows us to move the arms. Um, or you can have something like this, hyper-realistic fairy. This is the one we, it was in the talk. Um, these were the four images I got. So you can see from this image, from this prompt, I got four wildly different images, but I, I got one that kind of worked. I, I upscaled the one I liked because of the composition. Now, I think the bottom left one would have been good too, um, because she's kind of disappearing into the fire. So it's kind of that's kind of a cool idea, um, style style wise. But there it is. Let's see, is that the end? Okay, let me talk, let me show you where I got the other people's art. So when you go to the, your Mid Journey archive area, so on the left it says archive, that's where I'm at, that's my archive. You can go to the community feed. And these are all the art, this is all the public art that's being done. So obviously, Mila Kunitz is here. You can kind of see, oh, this is um, Assassin's Creed. You can see unbelievably awesome, kind of ethereal, you know, aesthetically beautiful, sci-fi. <laughs> Etherpunk, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, and at the bottom they show you the prompt. So if you change that prompt, if you copy that prompt and feed it back in, are you are you necessarily gonna get the same image? That's a fantastic question. Let's do it. No, the answer is no. I can promise you that. Um but we'll get something similar, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we got we got a little we got a little work. We'll come back when it's done. Oh, I'm getting buzzed. All my all my my notices that I'm getting. We got art done, man. Um, uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> so here's a cabbage lady. I don't know, <laughs> but it's really cool, right? Here's a uh, here's Wolf Abs. Um, here's obviously uh, Michael B. Jordan from Black Panther. You have the Ring of Power, but more engraved. You know, cuddling otters. There's obviously the Einstein photo I took the other day. Um, what's also cool up here is that you can search. So it will search based on people's prompts. So if you're like, oh, I want something that has foxes. You search fox, and you'll get a bunch of stuff that has foxes. Can you still have them separated to see what the prompt is? Absolutely. I'm sorry. I'm trying to open it here. Come on, my computer. I'm running this on a Chromebook, guys. We're taxing this Chromebook. Oh. Uh, I don't want the young girl. Anyway, it's a, it's a, it does, it does automatically, but my server doesn't automatically pump stuff into the feed, no, by default. That's if you go into the, uh, the mid journey, all those little sub sub uh, servers that they have, they'll they they per, they they peruse that for for creations. Yeah. Did we actually get? It's uh it's slowing down a little bit. But does anyone have any other questions that I can answer? Ah, there we go. So, Joel, Joel, totally different, but maybe something that works, right? Yeah, three is kind of similar, but like it, some, the other one was a little darker. This one's a little lighter, so maybe you have to go in there and, and specify a little, be a little darker. I think we're going to see a lot of book covers like that. I'm gonna. So I'm having out. Okay, so once you have it, then you can download it uh, through your archive. So here, it was a golden ring, the one ring, intricate design, ring of power, golden ring. So it's a lot of like ring. So they repeated the idea of ring, 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 and so they went out there and found it. So, so if you're looking for, like, say you wanted to look for all pictures that people have uploaded with rings. Yeah, you come up to the top. Did you search? Yeah, so ring. Um, then I'll answer your question while it's searching. Um, you go into your archive, and it gives you the option to download your image. And once you have that image, you go. Or whatever you want to use. Uh, so 
So a lot of different types of rings. And remember, um, it could be the Lord of the Rings. So you may have, you may run into some obviously some elves and and whatnot there. But you you'll get a lot of ring, ring stuff. So yeah, rings, toe rings, rings. So sometimes this model, this one probably had like a model with a ring on her finger, that type of thing. And he looks like he has a lot of ring. Yeah. So so sometimes you may have to specify a little bit more there. Anyway, any other questions? Good job, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. No, I'm going to do the Canva. I'm going to show how to use Canva to like make marketing materials. And Tony knows well. I do. Yes, I will. So Art Breeder. Oh, um, a stable diffusion and Dolly 2. Uh, I've played with Dolly 2. I have not done anything with stable diffusion. I've just seen the outputs of stable diffusion. So I obviously mid, mid journey most of the time. I only have so much time to be an artist. Fast as my fingers can go. You, you can get into some spirals because you wanted to make it work. But um, no, I, I don't spend a lot of time on it. Um, but when I do, it's you know maybe half hour or so, and you have a good internet connection. It really, it's it's fun. It's very fun. Any other questions? Cool. No problem. I hope you guys go out and make some good stuff. Did that help you with your graphic design? Because I know you're new. Did that help you? Okay. Cool. Total by Charles Walker, a total of around 43,000 for it. Uh, six of those, um, I've got the first pass done on the authors for the, okay, those, and a little less than the uh, and the word count is a little less than a third of the way. Get some of the short ones. Um, if anybody still has a story that they would like to send in or in process or in their head, uh, because we're not there yet, feel free to send them in. Any limit on the site? Um, 8,000 words. Uh, oh, thank you. What's that? Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I can send you, if, I don't know, I'll make sure I have your email, and I'll send you the uh, draft yeah. ones. Uh, and also, if anybody is interested, uh, be willing to do a, a, proof, a proofreader, probably go through all the stories first pass but I can use help on because I, I it's always good to have a second person look at it just to make sure that nothing is missed. Uh, second pass is easier because you know obviously the obvious stuff we were in snags. So it's just kind of an overall impression. And uh, that's where we're at in questions. Any, any volunteers? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. 
What's that? Okay. Yeah, we'll talk to you. Okay. Everything for um, punctuation and stuff like that. Not, not Don't worry too much about it because after I go through it, like the last thing I do is I run it through Grammarly. Uh, and and I typically do that before I send it back to the author because you know in case there's something there that you're like no I don't want that uh, unless it's you know something that's really important to have there uh, all of all of the suggestions that that, that I make are up to the author to accept or not unless again it's something. Kind of, kind of religious, but we really haven't had that problem. Will they come to us as PDFs or Word? Word. What I do is I use Word review function. So when you get it, it's like if I suggest another word, it'll you know it'll be strike through, and then in another color the suggestion, and also in the right column. Um, if it's something more than just the word, like, well, you might, you know, this is great, but maybe, uh, you know, this was that great. And then, again, you can actually respond in the comment when you send it back or make any changes or not. Yeah, just, just a couple of lines on and there was some things for the punctuation you find out in some usage where it wasn't all that clear. I it was clear in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, I, I really want to read it, obviously. But there were a couple of things that I pointed out, and she said, yes, you're technically correct, but this short story is feeding into a, 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 a book that I'm writing, and I want that to the style of that. Okay. We used that same program when we did ours, and sometimes their suggestions were way off. Oh, that's I don't, and, and I use it yeah. in, like on an edited books. And so when I go through, 